In this video, we'll be taking a look at the internal screen. This is the final input screen under the AHU's Zones and Rooms tab, and the last one for us to cover in this tutorial series. Here is where you enter your internal room loads, including people, lighting, and equipment loads. There are a few inputs that appear in all three of these sections, so I'll cover these first. First is the schedule number. This is an optional input and allows you to assign a load schedule to the load in question. If you don't enter anything in here, Camel will assume that 100% of the load is applied between the default plant operating hours entered in on the project screen. The second of these inputs is the percentage return airfield. This allows you to specify a portion of the load to be treated as a return duct gain rather than a room load. One example where you may wish to consider this is for a lighting load where your lights are recessed in the ceiling and are giving off heat into a return air plant. Otherwise, if the loads are considered to be entirely within the room, this field is best left blank. The third and final common input is the percentage for heating field. This allows you to include this load in your heating load calculation. Be careful if you choose to use this, as it will effectively mean that your heating plant will be relying in part on the heat generated by this people, lighting or equipment load, rather than being able to cater for the full heating load itself. Looking now at the people load section, this is where you'll enter in your room occupancy. You can either specify a fixed number of people in the room, or use an area-based occupancy, such as people per 10 square meters, or meter squared of floor area per person. Activity ID is also a required field. Right click this cell to bring up the menu where you can choose the closest option to what your people are doing in the room. The more vigorous the activity, the more heat the people will generate. You can click the help button here to see what the actual loads are for each activity. Moving on to the lighting loads, you can specify a fixed kilowatt heat load or a watts per meter squared value, and then you enter the corresponding value into the load field. The lights type field is also required. Right click to bring up the options for this. This is used in determining the storage load factors for the lights and follows the methodology set out in the Aero DA9 3rd edition. Note that these options are quite old and that there is an obvious lack of an LED option. Most of the time your selection here won't have a significant impact on your results, particularly if you aren't using a schedule and are running your lights at 100% throughout the day. We will be updating this section once the new edition of the DA9 is released, which is currently in the works. In this last section, you can enter in any other loads, be they sensible loads, latent loads, or steam loads. This is often where you will enter in your equipment loads. Sensible and latent loads can be entered in either kilowatts of heat or watts per meter squared, whereas steam loads can be entered in grams per second or watts per meter squared. That's all for this video. We've now covered all of the input screens in Camel Plus. In the next video, We'll be running a calculation and taking a look at the results screens. Bye for now.